Hi, I'm Dr. Brandon Diaz, and we're outside the Galloping Ghost Arcade here in Brookfield, Illinois, and I'm going to show you how easy it can be to repair your video games. Opening up the back of an arcade cabinet might look intimidating, but if you're going to be working on your own arcade games and repairing them, it's probably something that you're going to have to do eventually. So, in this episode, we're going to look at what happens if you need to adjust your power supply and the proper procedure to do so. Working with electricity can look dangerous, and sometimes it is, so following proper procedure and knowing what to avoid will keep you away from the danger of getting electrocuted. So I'm going to show you the proper tools that you'll need and the proper way to do it for adjusting a power supply such as this. This is a pretty standard switching power supply and there are other power supplies that will show you that vary from this look, but most of them all do the same thing and you'll be able to use all the same tools to adjust them uh, just as easily as each other. And it does fix a lot of very simple problems. It fixes graphical issues, resetting problems, audio issues, other gameplay issues, and a lot of other things. So let's get started. To show you how to test and adjust the voltage on a standard switching power supply, we're going to be in the office here, and I'm going to be using this test rig that has pretty much all of the components that are in a standard arcade cabinet, all the way down from the JAMA harness, power switch, line filter, transformer, fuse block, and then the power supply, which is right here. So on the standard switching power supply, you'll have two main functions. You'll have a input and then the outputs. The inputs being the power that's coming from the wall via your line filter and fuse block, and then you'll have the outputs that are going directly to your board or out to other components that are inside the arcade cabinet. So here on this power supply, we have AC in for alternating current, AC in, and then the fault ground. These all come from the wall outlet. They're not always going to be located in the same position. Sometimes they're at the bottom, sometimes they're at the top, sometimes they're gonna be configured in a different way. Uh, here on this power supply, they just happen to be at the top. They're generally configured in the way of power, power, ground. The voltages on a power supply can be oriented in different orders. It's always different. They're not always standardized, but the voltages that go out towards the PCB board, they're always in the same location to make it easier that you're not going to confuse it with the wall outlet power. If you were to put wall outlet power through the board, you would completely destroy the board. You want to avoid that. So they put the AC power on one side, and the DC power that goes out towards the board on the other side for safety. On this power supply, we have here 12 volt, ground, ground, five volt, and then negative five volt. Sometimes you'll have something like a, a negative 12 volt or maybe like a 13 volt. Sometimes there's even something as crazy as like a 30 volt. Most arcade games will run on a five volt, negative five volt, 12 volt, and then a two ground setup. What we're gonna be focusing here is on the five volt as it is the most important. Although when you turn the adjustment knob on the power supply, all of the voltages will go up or down depending on which way you're turning it. The five volt is the one that changes the most. And that's the one that is most important for powering the board. The multimeter I'm going to be using today is this one here. It's made by Klein Tools. We're really focusing in on direct current voltages today, so this one's really overkill. But uh, there are other multimeters. You can get something like this. This is really small. It has a lot of functionalities as the same one, but it doesn't have like a thermometer and some other of the crazy functionality. And then the other thing you'll need is probably a small screwdriver. Our power supply uses a flathead or slotted screwdriver. So to turn on our multimeter, we're going to change it from off onto the voltage setting, and it's automatically on alternating current. It says up here, it has a little squiggly line. We're gonna change that to direct current. Right. Next, we're going to turn on our power supply by turning on the test rig. Our test rig doesn't have a PCB game board attached to it today, and so that's going to throw off the voltages that are going to be read off of our power supply. It doesn't mean that they're going to be wrong, but what's going to happen is when the power supply has a game board attached to it, the voltages are going to be reading differently. So 
if we have a gain board on here, it's going to be drawing current away from the power supply. It's going to be adding a resistance load, which is going to change how much power readout is coming off of our multimeter from our power supply. So keep in mind, when you adjust your power supply for your game, you want to have your game attached to the JAMA harness or whatever other harness you have going on there. However, if you're putting it all together for the first time, make sure you measure your voltages first so that you're not loading like six volts into your board because that'll really, really mess up your board. So you do what they call a smoke test. It's kind of turn on the power supply with nothing attached to it, put your leads down onto your power supply to test the outputs. Make sure that it's somewhere in the five volt range, low fives, high 4.99s is okay when nothing's attached to it. Turn it off, attach your game board to it, turn it back on, reread everything. That way, everything's where it's supposed to be generally, but with now with your game board load on there, it'll change the voltages, and then you'll have to readjust them again. So we're going to take our black lead and we're going to attach it to our ground terminal and then we're going to take our red lead and attach that to the 12 volt terminal. As you can see here our 12 volt is reading 12.20 which is pretty high. So we take our black lead and we're going to put it down onto the ground again and we're going to take our red lead and find the plus 5. So the plus 5 here is reading very high. It's reading a 5.25. We're going to want to turn that down. Next we're going to read our negative 5. So the negative 5 is reading pretty low. It's negative 4.78. So it looks like our 5 volt is running really hot. We're going to have to turn that down. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. Alligator clips come in pretty handy in this next part. You can attach them to the terminals of your power supply and then attach them to the leads on your multimeter. Or you can do it by using both your hands at the same time. You can hold both leads in one hand and then use the screwdriver in your other hand. So we're going to take these leads and we're going to find the 5 volt again. So you can see here we're still reading 5.25. From here, we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to find the adjustment knob. Generally, the adjustment knobs are labeled. They're usually like a white plastic knob or a black plastic knob that you turn left or right to adjust the power going up and down. So we're going to slip our screwdriver in here and we're going to give it a slight turn to the left. And we're going to go down until we get into the low 5 range. I'm going to turn it down to 5.00 just to demonstrate something. All right. So now we have it at 5.00, as you can see here. What can be concerning about these power supplies is that it only has one adjustment knob on there. So when you're adjusting the 5 volt, you're also adjusting the negative 5 volt, you're also adjusting the 12 volt. So what happens is, now that we've turned down our 5 volt, what happened to the 12 volt? What happened to the negative 5? The negative 5 was reading pretty low. It was about 4.7 if I'm remembering correctly. So let's check that out. So we're going to find our ground again with our black lead. And we're going to look at the 12 volt this time. The 12 volt is now reading 11.61. So let's check out the negative 5. And now we're at 4.53. 4.53 also seems kind of low. But at the same time, when you attach your game board to here, it might start drawing some more power out of this power supply. So those might raise up. So for example, let's adjust our negative 5 volt back up to negative 5, where we would think it's supposed to be, and let's see what happens. So we're going to put our lead on the ground, and we're going to find the negative 5 and it's reading 4.53 and we're going to adjust this until we get to negative 5 so now we have negative 5 now let's see what happens when we read our positive 5 
our 5 volt on our power supply is reading 5.48. That's really high. That's going to be concerning. We don't want to put that much power coming through our board. So this is why it's important to make sure that you're testing your positive 5 volt. That's the most important one. Generally, your game is going to be okay with a little bit less 12 volt power. Generally, it's going to be okay with a little bit less negative 5 power. But the 5 volt is the most important. So that's the one to keep an eye on. So that's pretty much all there is to it. All you need to do is get yourself a multimeter, maybe a screwdriver, and just keep an eye on the 5 voltage to make sure that it's in the right range that you need it to be in. And from there, you can fix a whole lot of different problems that your machine might be experiencing. It might be resetting, it might be having some graphical errors or some gameplay glitches. This could very easily take care of that problem for you. Also, by making sure that your voltages are in the right range, it'll make your game last a lot longer than if you're pumping through some higher voltages. It'll burn out the board a lot quicker. So, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks.